ones, and I have been trying them out, and uh, I can see really well with them. Amen. Uh, I've got one and a quarter power, and they're just a little bit too powerful for me uh, because when I uh, just glance anywhere else, I get uh, motion sickness or dizzy or whatever. And and uh, uh, but uh, anyways, Romans chapter number uh, twelve. Turn there with me. I'll review real quick. Like we have been in the introduction of this lesson. If you need a copy of the lesson, hold your hand up nice and high. Uh, I got one up here. One, a couple of them over here. Uh, if we could make sure those get handed out, uh, we're on lesson number. Nine, the censored mind. What do you in the series? What are you thinking, Christian? And there should be four pages total: page one and two, and then three and four. And uh, uh, if you could hand those out, I'd appreciate uh, that. Uh, again, hold your hand up; he'll he'll bring them to you as quickly as possible here. And uh, uh, we, uh, you know, by the way, I, I really appreciate all those that uh, came out to the men's uh, rod and reel fishing outing. We had a great time. And I uh, appreciate Bill Islama. Uh, he lent uh, his pontoon boat uh, to us and allowed us to be able to uh, take it out. And so we had two pontoon boats and I think two fishing boats. Is that correct? And I uh, uh, was able to get everybody uh, out, on the, out on the lake and had a good time. And, and uh, in spite of the rain, we still had a great time. Uh, we had some rain on Friday night, a little bit Saturday morning, but uh, finally about 9 o'clock it just stopped. And did spit, and uh, uh, a couple of people said they, they were in a spot where it rained a little bit on them, but then they moved to a different part of the lake, and it was fine. So, <laughs> and uh, we had it, it was misting where we were at for just a little bit, and then it stopped, and, and we were fine too. So, uh, but uh, anyways, Romans chapter number 12, and uh, I'm going to read, uh, uh, read that real quick like Romans chapter number 12. And uh, we're going to look at verse number two, and then we'll uh, review real quick like here. Uh, Romans chapter number 12, verse number two says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We've been talking about the censored mind and how important it is to have some things that are censored in our, our minds uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, we talked about how we uh, can many times resist and reject the truth, uh, but in the end, it still will be true. You know, if somebody says, well, I don't believe in hell. Okay, well, it doesn't change the fact that hell is real, amen? And uh, uh, they can sit there and say, well, I don't believe in God. Okay, it doesn't change the fact that God is still real and God still exists. And uh, he's, uh, he's working in all those different things. And uh, uh, the Bible tells us thy word is truth. We talked about uh, uh, some things in uh, the book of John and chapter number eight, uh, how we need to uh, allow the word of God to impact our life. And, uh, and then we talked about... Uh, uh, in uh, the still in the introduction, uh, right near that, uh, the, about in the middle of the page there, mind control. I ask, why not? Uh, we are all being influenced by something. I mentioned about how we all are influenced by the news, by social media. Uh, there are a lot of things in life. People, you know, other people influence other people, um, and. Uh, uh, you know, you, you start talking to somebody and you can uh, either persuade them, you know, uh, one way or another with something. And, and uh, I've seen people, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, told something and they were persuaded and they uh, get into church. And I've seen the opposite happen where they're told something and they're persuaded and they get out of church. And uh, sadly that happens, but we're all influenced by something. We talked about how uh, uh, it's much better to be uh, let, you know, influenced by the Spirit than it is by the uh, flesh. We looked at Romans chapter number 6 and verses 16 through 18. And we ended on the latter part of that point. We're not quite finished with that point, uh, that bullet point there. Uh, and we talked about how there are several aspects of mind controlled uh, by truth found in Ephesians chapter number 4, verses 11 through uh, 34. We were on, uh, we finished verse number 14. So we're going to turn there, uh, Ephesians chapter number 4. I'll read that uh, just through verse 14, and we'll have a word of prayer and then get right into the lesson uh, here this morning. Ephesians chapter number 4, and beginning there in verse number 11, and reading through verse number uh, 14, it says this, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers 
for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men in cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. I've talked about how important it is to uh, you know, get to the point where you, uh, you know, are in the Word of God uh, so that you know the truth of God's Word, so that somebody doesn't come along and tell you something that's contrary to God's Word and uh, persuades you to do what, what is wrong or persuades you to follow that which is evil. And uh, we're going to pick up in verse number 15 here, uh, but before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, bless now your Word, bless Bless to your, uh, your people. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be in tune to your Holy Spirit, Lord. Just uh, uh, help us to glean uh, those things that are needful in our heart and our life. Lord, that you'll be honored and glorified. And all that's said and done, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Picking up there, Ephesians chapter number four, picking up there in verse number 15, it says this, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. You know, one of the things that we uh, uh, need to realize, too, is, uh, yes, we need to speak the truth, but it needs to be with the right heart attitude. Uh, you know, if, you, uh, uh, if somebody isn't in church, for instance, you know, uh, uh, you shouldn't go to them and say, well, bless God, you know, you're not right with God, get in church, amen? All right, that's just the wrong heart attitude, all right? Um, now, yes, I agree with what you say, all right? Yes, it's wrong for them to be uh, out of church, amen? Why? Because the Bible tells us, Hebrews chapter number 10 and verse number 25, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some is, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So we know it's important to be in God's house, amen? However, even though you're speaking truth, you're not speaking it with love. You know, uh, it's like this. When uh, a little baby falls down, you don't uh, sit there and say, well, you big dummy, what's your problem? Why'd you fall over? Amen? You don't do that. I, I've never seen a parent do that. If you did, I, I would question your, your parenting skills. Amen? But instead, you say, oh, it's okay. Hey, let's get back up. Amen? Hey, uh, no, let's try and walk again. Amen? Why? They're, you're trying to teach them, hey, how to keep walking, how to do things, and you know, whether it's how to eat or what, whatever it is, you're trying to teach them. And the problem with some Christians is they speak the truth, but it's not, there's no love behind it. There, there's no uh, uh, encouraging, uh, you know, hey, no, it's all right. Let's, let's get back into the house of God. Hey, you, you failed at reading your Bible uh, this week? Hey, that's okay. Get back into it. Amen. That's what they need. They need somebody to encourage them, to help them to get back into the word of God. But he said there, uh, uh, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things problem with a lot of Christians, there's a lot of Christians that have not grown up. I was talking about this with a, uh, a pastor friend recently, uh, about the lack of spiritual maturity and spiritual discernment in a lot of Christians. I mean, uh, it just is mind-boggling how many Christians are just uh, uh, persuaded by uh, on truth, um, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit. I, I want to be careful because I'm talking about that in the mes message this morning. But uh, you and I need to realize, hey, the Lord is trying to teach us some things and show us some things and uh, trying to help us to grow. And the problem with some Christians is they don't want to grow. They don't want to have the discernment in their heart. They like the status quo. They're fine with uh, where they're at spiritually. They don't want to grow beyond where they're at. They just, uh, they're just content. Now, I understand we need to be uh, content. Amen? Uh, the Bible talks about contentment. Amen? Uh, some good things. But we should never be content with where we're at spiritually. We should never get to the point where we're like, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm right here spiritually, so this is okay. I don't need to grow beyond this point. And that's what Paul was talking about here to, at the, to the church at Ephesus. He was saying, hey, but you got to speak the truth in love. That you, you know, uh, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. 
Then he goes on to say in verse number 16, again, this is all dealing with uh, the censored mind. How, how do we get that censored mind and be able to have that discernment, be able to say, hey, wait a second, there's some things I'm not going to allow into my mind. I'm not going to let it into my heart. I'm not going to let it into my ear gate. I'm not like, going to let it into my eye gate. Amen. There's some things you just have to have the discernment to be able to say, wait a second, this isn't right. He said there, verse number 16, from uh, whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. The problem, again, goes back to, you know, us showing the love of Christ to somebody who is, uh, you know, not where they need to be spiritually. Uh, I mentioned this not too long ago. I said, you know, it's not about sweeping sin under the rug, right? We're not talking about that. But the problem is, is that we aren't allowing uh, some room for them to grow. We need to, uh, you know, take a step back and let the Holy Spirit convict them of, of things in their life. Yes, we should speak the truth. Yes, we should speak it in love. Amen. Yes, there may be times, uh, you know, if we we formed a friendship with somebody, yes, there might be something that you may be able to, uh, it's a little bit uh, harder dealing with them and, and a little bit harder to speak to them about it, but you're willing to say, hey, because we're friends. I had, uh, I had a, a, a pastor friend not too long ago that I said, you know, we're friends. I said, I love you. I care about you. I said, because of this, this is what I'm going to talk to you about. And he goes, Brother Hal, this is uh, some hard things. I said, yep. Uh, you and I need to realize, hey, we need to be able to, to speak one, with one another in love. And again, my, my love for him didn't change. My friendship with him didn't change. Uh, but I did speak to him in truth, uh, uh, spoke to him truth in love and just said, hey, this needs to change, brother. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Very true. Very true. And, and then he goes on to say, though, the effectual, uh, according to the effectual working, in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto itself, uh, uh, unto, uh, I'm sorry, uh, increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. The problem with uh, so many uh, Christians, you know, we're, we're prone to shoot our wounded. As soon as something do, uh, somebody does something wrong, we're prone to, you know, well, that's it. The horse broke its leg. You know, we're sending off to the glue factory. Amen. And it's like, whoa, whoa, hold on. Amen. Uh, this is not a horse. Amen. We're dealing with a, an individual and their spiritual life, and we want to help them to grow beyond where they're at. We don't want to see them stay in the ditch. Amen. We don't want to see them uh, remain, uh, you know, in that infantile state spiritually. We don't, I never want to see somebody even remain in that toddler state or the, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the young person or the, the, the rebellious teenager state and all those different you know, uh, stages in life. I never want to see anybody stay in any one of those stages too long. When they stay too long, that means there's a problem spiritually. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Make sure you're taking care of the, the uh, you know, beam in your own eye before you try to take care of the toothpick in somebody else's eye. Amen. But he goes on to say in uh, verse number 17, he said, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. You know, the problem with the church at Ephesus they were, uh, remember, uh, remember Jesus even talks about, uh, uh, I have, uh, you know, he talks about some good things. And then he said, I have somewhat against thee, and that thou hast left thy, what? First love. They were so focused on everybody else that they weren't focused on the Lord. And that's what oftentimes happens in the Christian life. We begin to grow and we say, well, they're not growing as fast as I'm growing. Now why, why aren't they growing like I'm growing? And we begin to compare ourselves among ourselves. The Lord even talks about that in, in the book of Corinthians and, and says, hey, you know, uh, if you're uh, comparing yourselves among yourselves, you're not wise. But the problem with, uh, you know, we're, we're human and we do that, don't we? 
How many have done this when you're driving? Well, I'm not driving as fast as they are. Or I'm driving faster than they are. Amen? I've done it. I did it just this last week. I was like, man, this guy is so slow. I was, th- I was thinking, I said it out loud. I said, oh, man, this guy is driving slow. What are we? This is not Sunday afternoon. Amen? I even said that. I said it out loud. Amen? Why? We compare ourselves, don't we? Well, I'm not as fast. I'm not as slow. Well, I'm, I'm a little more spiritual. I'm not as carnal. Amen? That's what we began to say. And we, we compare ourselves and we say, well, you know, they're, they're not where they need to be spiritually. Wait a second. What about you? Because he was talking about, he said, hey, uh, he said, walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Hey, I'm, I'm something. You know, God's got something when he got me. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. That's what Paul is talking about. He said, don't walk like they are walking. He said, this is the problem in the church. And too many times we as Christians need to be able to say, hey, Lord, help me to have the right kind of mindset. And uh, that way I can have a censored mind, not against the truth, but against that which is evil or that which is a lie. Amen? Notice what else he says. I don't know if we're even going to get through this introduction today. I can't even see the tongue. There we go. (sighs) Notice what he says here. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the what? Because of the what? Blindness of their heart. When, When we come to church... We ought to have our heart opened and ready to receive whatever God has for us from the preaching and teaching of God's word, all right? The problem is, is many times we have uh, blind spots. I wanted to bring something uh, today and I I didn't and I I, I was going to make copies of it so you could see it. I'm going to try to bring it next week. So uh, I will try to do, I had a whole bunch of other things. I had to make a couple of certificates and things like that. But anyways, uh, so uh, there, there are some blind spots, all right? Um, I'll, bring it, I'll bring it next week. I've got a card that has two objects on there. And if you focus on the one object with your eye and you start bringing it in close, all of a sudden you, there becomes a point where the other object disappears. You cannot see. It's there, but your eye cannot see it. And every single person has that. You say, well, what are you talking about? I can't explain it, amen? I had a, uh, uh, it was a pastor friend that, that shared that with us and was showing us and he did some research, research with a, an ophthalmologist and, and they shared that every single person has that blind spot where all of a sudden, it just all of a sudden disappears. And that is what happens to a lot of Christians. If you read this sentence backwards or this verse backwards, watch carefully. Uh, verse, number, uh, uh, verse number 18. Because of the blindness of their heart, they were alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, having their understanding darkened. Because of that blindness of their heart, they became alienated to the things of God. And then, notice at the beginning of that verse, having the understanding what? Darkened. The problem with a lot of Christians is they're, they're, uh, uh, they have a blindness in their heart. They have a blind spot. I, I've shared this so many times. Uh, uh, I, I don't want it to become old hat, but uh, years ago I was driving truck and uh, uh, I was driving up through Georgia and uh, up I-75. It was a hard, hard rain. I mean, uh, we, we had some hard rain. It was so bad, I literally could not see, but, but it may be about uh, 100 feet in front of me. It is. Now, traffic was moving along, so I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just going to... There's three lanes uh, there in Georgia going up I-75, and I'm like, okay, I'll sit in the middle lane. Well, then there was... Uh, I come up on this one person, and uh, I'm like, uh, they're sitting in the middle lane, and they're going real slow, so then I was like, okay, I'll get in the, uh, the right lane. I'll just uh, pass somebody and then get in the right lane. Well, this uh, vehicle that was going slow finally got over into the right lane, 
and I was like, okay, I'm gonna pass them. And then I saw some more traffic that was in the center lane and I could see a little bit further ahead uh, finally uh, to a point because I could see some uh, lights and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get over into the right lane. So I was counting when I was passing people. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000 because I couldn't see the end of the trailer. Behind me, there was just so much mist and all that stuff coming up. And I knew how fast I was going, knew uh, approximately how, how long it would take to get, uh, get to the point where I was uh, far enough ahead of the vehicle I could get over safely without hitting the vehicle. I did that for quite a few uh, vehicles. Finally, there was this Jeep, as I mentioned, that had gotten into the uh, right lane. I was going past that and I was counting. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, 1,000. Finally, I, okay, I'm like, okay, I should be far enough ahead. I put my blinker on and I started getting over. Got over in the right lane, uh, just kept going. I got a phone call from my dispatcher about a half hour, 45 minutes later. She's like, Tim, where are you at? I said, I'm in Georgia. She goes, uh, uh, what, what truck do you have? And I said, my truck. She goes, well, I mean, what trailer? So I told her the trailer number. It was a Weather Shield trailer. Um, I don't remember what the number was, but whatever the number it was. And, and she goes, ah, I said, why? She goes, uh, you ever heard of Shaw Carpets? I'm like, yeah. She goes, you just ran the uh, daughter uh, of the owner of Shaw Carpets off the road. I'm like, what? I'm like, no, I honestly, I, did, I don't think I did. Come to find out what had happened was as I was passing her, she got nervous and she sped up faster. And I could not see her. I couldn't see her at all. But she got nervous and began to go a little faster. And I was right near, uh, uh, her vehicle was right near the back of the trailer. And as I was coming over, she got off. Uh, she didn't go off the road completely, but she was on the uh, um, uh, 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 shoulder, yeah, shoulder. Uh, she was on the right hand shoulder and, and didn't get, you know, didn't get in any kind of accident, but uh, was concerned. Uh, wrote down the truck number and, and, or the trailer number and all that. And uh, that's why they called me. And I, I called her and I apologized. I said, hey, I am so sorry. I didn't see you. And that's when I found out. She goes, well, I was speeding up. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, oh, that's what happened. I said, you know, and I told her exactly what I was doing. She goes, oh, she goes, I didn't even think of that. I said, I'm so sorry that happened to you. That was not done intentionally. I said, I did not see you. There are times in our life when we have some blind spots. And that's exactly what Paul was telling the church at Ephesus. He said, because of the blindness of their heart, they became ignorant of the things of God. And they uh, uh, got to the point where he said, hey, their, their understanding was even darkened. They, they didn't understand what God was trying to do. They, they couldn't see the things of God because, again, it, be, it started with that blindness in their heart. And there are a lot of Christians that are like that. And we as God's people need to be willing to say, Lord, I want to make sure that I have a censored mind, but I don't want to be blind to, you know, to what you're trying to show me. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, you know, uh, knowingly say, well, I'm just going to be ignorant of that one spot and, and uh, ignore it. And if I ignore it, it'll go away. No, it won't. Amen. We need to be willing to say, Lord, would you help me uh, to see those blind spots, to see those areas in my life that need to be cleaned up? Notice what else he said. Who being past feeling have given themselves over into lasciviousness to work all in cleanness and, uh, with greediness. He said, hey, this is a problem. They get to the point where they even seem like they're unsaved because they're not having a censored mind. They're not, uh, uh, you know, because of the blindness of their heart, they're just allowing, you know, willy-nilly whatever. That word lasciviousness means a, a wanton uh, uh, lustfulness. It just, uh, there's you know, like an animalistic uh, uh, regard to everything, you know. Uh, just, uh, well, whatever feels good, I'm going to do it. That's the kind of attitude he's talking about. But notice what he says in verse number 20. He said, but ye have not so learned Christ. He said, this is the problem, church at Ephesus. He's talking to them, remember? And he's, uh, you know, speaking to us here in the future. He's saying, hey, but you have not so learned Christ. You, you didn't learn this from Christ. You've not learned about Christ. You've not learned and understood more about Christ. Because if you did, you wouldn't have this attitude. You wouldn't have this blindness. You, know, you wouldn't have that ignorant, uh, uh, ignorance of the word of God. You wouldn't have that uh, uh, there in verse number, uh, uh, verse number 18. Again, having their understanding darkened. He said, hey, 
if you had uh, learned about Christ, you wouldn't have even your understanding darkened. You ever, uh, we'll have to close with this. You ever been in a room where it's uh, just so dark you can't even see the hand in front of your face? Amen. Uh, we got to go on a, uh, our kids were on a, uh, a school trip and uh, we got to go to, excuse me, Crystal Cave. And uh, they were talking about even, there's still some uh, uh, caves that are still being explored to this day. They still haven't found everything. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty amazing, amen. But it, uh, it, and they, they did a thing where they shut off all the lights and you try to, you know, see your hand, right? I mean, I got it as close as I could. I'm like, couldn't see anything. But you know, there are a lot of Christians that are like that. They get to the point where their understanding is darkened and they can't even see the faults and the, the imperfections right in front of their own face. And it's staring back at them in the mirror, but they're willing to point their finger at everybody else and say, well, it's not me when it is them. Amen? Uh, yeah, so we'll close with this. Amen. 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 You know, your, your testimony is far reaching and people do pay attention to you. And uh, I've had people recently even said, oh yeah, we watch you on Facebook. I'm like, or why well, watch you on YouTube? I'm like, oh, okay. Didn't even know. And, uh, I uh, had no clue, but uh, people do pay attention, amen. Uh, we got to stop there. As I said, I, I wasn't sure if we get through the introduction today because I knew all the verses that we had to deal with. Uh, so uh, we'll pick up there, verse number uh, 21, and uh, uh, we'll pick up there, verse 21. We're still on that point. We'll get past it, Lord willing, next week, all right? Because uh, we're only going through verse 24, so um, we're not going to all the rest of the chapter there, but uh, yeah, uh, so anyways. What's that? It's all good. It's all scripture. Amen. And uh, so uh, bring that lesson back with you uh, next week, Lord willing, and uh, we'll take a look at it. All right. Let's be uh, dismissed in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, thank you for uh, your word again. And Lord, thank you for the lesson. Lord, I do pray that you'd help us to listen to the words of Paul uh, to the church there at Ephesus. And Lord, that we'd uh, heed what he's trying to tell them uh, even here today. And Lord, I just pray that you'd uh, uh, help us to be willing to have that censored mind. Lord, be, uh, uh, not allow that blindness of our heart to uh, be ignorant of your word and what you're trying to show us. And then, um, you know, having a, an understanding that's darkened, Lord, I just pray that you'd help us to uh, uh, make sure that uh, uh, we... Uh, uh, aren't blind to those spots or willing to admit that we at least have those blind spots and then ask your help, Lord, to help us uh, with those areas in our life. Lord, I pray now that you'll uh, bless the uh, uh, preaching service this morning. Lord, I pray to be honored and glorified in all that we say and do. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. All right, you have-